Hi, this is PDF Bergzerg Arcade at bergzergarcade.com and this is tutorial 154. And this is part 8, I believe, of our little uh, building from scratch and cleanup. And there's a couple things I wanted to go over that we did yesterday that I just didn't quite fit in. Uh, let me see. Well, we're going to start off with the spawn points. I mentioned that our mobs are not meant just to be you know, placed in the scene. They have to be uh, a child of something. And what they're supposed to be a child of is a spawn point. This is the way I have it worked out. So if you hit play, you notice our spawn points. All of a sudden, we have the little drop down. And that's where the mob gets placed from our mob generation script. And you'll notice I've got a mage, um, a skeleton melee, and a, well, another, another zombie mage. But if you go ahead and look, uh, the radius is 10, which is, the, which is the exact same as the perception range. So it looks like we did actually add that functionality to it already. I'm going to go in and change the zombies perception range to 5 because, well, the zombies aren't that perceptive. So let's go ahead and start it off. And now we'll go look at the zombie mage and we'll notice that the radius is now 5. And of course you can look in the scene view and let's, uh, oh, we got all three zombies that time. If we would have had a skeleton, you would have noticed that the skeleton's radius would have been twice the size. But okay, let's move on to our next script. The next script was the target mob script. So I'm going to activate that now. And you'll notice that we have a list of targets which we can actually make private now. And the selected target which we can also make private. Now in order for this to work, all of our mobs that we want to be able to target have to have the tag of enemy. Now we don't have an enemy tag up here yet. So I'm going to go ahead and just create one. And it was with a capital E. So I'll just go ahead and add that tag. I'll select my skeleton melee. And I'll just give him that tag. And I'll do the same for the mage. There we go. And one thing I want to check is make sure I did give them some base health to start with. And I did. So let's start it up. And you'll notice that when you start getting close to them and you try to target, you're going to get this error saying that it could not find the name on Skeleton Melee. Now, that's something we added uh, quite, a while, quite a while ago. It was, uh, we're adding a 3D, we're adding a 3D text to our mob. So I'm just going to go ahead and create one. And it just says, hello world. And I'm going to take that and I'm going to drop it on our Skeleton Melee. I will need to do it for both and it's called name as you'll notice over here you can also check in the script itself so if we open it up you notice that up here it's looking for a child named name and of course if we can't find it it tells us we can't find it but let's go back in and uh, we call it name and let's clear that out it's transform that is We'll hit reset, so let's zoom in on it now. Not exactly where we want it positioned. So I'm going to come up here and change the anchor to, oh, let's go upper center. A bit better, but not exactly where we want it. We want it above the mob. So we want it right there. And if we look at the front of the mob, it's backwards. But we'll work on having it face the right way a little later on. We'll be adding a little bit of code so that this 3D text always faces the player, regardless of how you're looking at them. But for now, we just want to be able to get the name up there. So I don't need it to cast or receive shadows. Uh, you can go ahead and assign your own font. Uh, I think I've covered changing fonts before. If not, it's not that hard. You should be able to easily find some documentation on the Unity site for it. I'm just going to stick with the base font. I'm just going to change the alignment to center. And the font style to, oh, let's go bold. So I'm going to take my new skeleton, Melee, and I'm going to save him off into the prefab again. And he turned blue, so I'll just delete him. And I'm going to do the same to the zombie mage. So I'll go ahead, I'll add him. I'll create other 3D text. Drop that 3D, de 3D text onto my zombie mage. Change it to name. Oops, I put a little extra character in there. 
zero it out again zoom in on my mage and let's see we'll select the name change it to upper center I like my alignment to be center bold move up and I'll just save him off and then we'll get rid of him and we'll just start it back up now we'll notice that all of them have their name showing by default not exactly what we want we should add some code that hides it by default uh, for now we're just going to turn it off by default and of course when we try to target we're going to get this message that it's trying to broadcast the health but uh, there's no listener so if we just click it uh, we'll, we'll fix that but first let's go ahead and hide the names by default so I'm gonna come down and take name actually let's just go ahead and do it in the script itself so I'm gonna select the the mob and we're gonna go into the mob script and I'm gonna come up to the start function and if you notice we're actually assigning a default name of slug mob I later on we'll actually want to get the name that's been uh, dynamically assigned to this mob and assign it to the assign it into the name variable uh, but for now we'll just leave that what we want to do is actually get a reference to the child name and check to see if it has a mesh renderer and if it does uh, we're just going to deactivate it by default and if it doesn't let's throw out another warning for the players or for the developer so he knows like hey I gotta attach a, a 3d GUI text here so we're just gonna say game object and I'm just gonna call it temp name now uh, let's make it a little more descriptive display name is equal to transform dot find child because it is a child of this of the main object and the child we're trying to find is name then we'll just do a little if block so if display name equals null meaning we could not find it we're going to return uh, but before we return we should put that message in here so we'll just say debug dot log warning please add a 3d text to the mob and if I knew what tutorial exactly it was in, I'd put that out too so they could see. And I should look that up a little later on and add that into the code. All right, so if it does actually have uh, a child named name, let's go ahead and get the mesh component to it. So we're just going to go display name dot get component. The component we want is a mesh renderer and we're just going to set its enable to equal faults so that'll turn it off by default and I'll just quickly save that we'll head back into unity make sure there's no compiling errors and there's one cannot implicitly convert unity into transform to game object oh, okay We'll just change this to transform. And that should be fine. We'll start it up. No errors. And the first mob, when you go to target it, should get the name now. There we go. Now our next error. Let me just stop this and take a look. Now this is a broadcast exception, and it's because of the C sharp messenger class we're using. Uh, it basically what's happening is that it's sending out this message that the mob's health needs to be updated on the screen or display and there's nothing there to actually receive it now we've gone ahead and created vital bars and had them displayed on the screen using GUI textures and a lot of people had trouble with that so I'm going to switch it back over to using uh, our on GUI method that we've created for all of our other GUI elements uh, so what I'm going to do is actually just disable this for now and when I get up to the point in the tutorial where we're actually adding the vital bars to it, that's when I'll re-enable it. So I'm not going to be using the GUI textures anymore. 
Uh, if you are interested in learning about how to use the GUI textures, uh, just go back into the tutorial series and look up uh, the vital bars. Uh, everything's there that you need to know. But for now, I'm just going to disable the whole vital bar system because I, I am going to be redoing it fairly fairly soon. So I'm going to go back into Mono Develop, and I'm going to start off with Mob. And down here on the Display Health method, this is the message that's being sent out. And there's actually two ways to disable it. Uh, one is there's a property that we could pass in here, uh, which is escaping me right now. It was something along the lines of messenger mode, I believe. Uh, maybe broadcast message. It was messenger mode. And you could say do not require listener. And we'll save that off and we'll probably get one more error that comes up for uh, displaying the actual health. Yeah, we got one there and that's in the actual targeting script. So we'll go in there and it's right here. So we can do the exact same thing here. So messenger mode dot do not require listener and it looks like we have it down here as well so we'll just set this one to do not require listener as well so we won't get the error message but the same thing is still happening it's sending out a message and there's nothing to actually capture this message so in the background the same thing is happening but we just don't get this little warning here and this actually is just a warning because it won't stop your game from working. Uh, but they have it coded so that it, it pops up looking like an error. Well, let's just start this up. And you'll notice now when you start targeting, as you tab through all the different mobs, you're not getting uh, the messages anymore. Now, to be honest, while I'm actually developing, I don't like saying, you know, don't require a listener because if something uh, like this warning does pop up, I'm not going to know. And... If a certain functionality is not working and I'm not getting a warning for it, then it becomes a lot harder to, to debug. So what I'm going to do is actually just comment out these lines and the one in mob until I actually get a chance to come back and work on it. And for me, I find it makes it much easier to debug a little later on because when I enable them again if it's still not connected right or I have nothing out there receiving the message at least I'll still get the message over here and I can go oh that's why my mob's health is not updating on the screen it's because I don't have anything listening for it so let's start this back up one more time and I'll run up to a mob and sure enough when I tab around there they are now we're going to be getting back into the mobs pretty soon uh, we're going to be working a little bit on the magic system for as far as buffs and everything else go but after that, uh, we'll probably actually still be working a little bit more on the inventory. I'd like to get the rest of my inventory uh, done as far as armor goes. And then after that, we'll be going back into combat. And of course, we'll have to work with the mob, upgrading the mob along the way. So that's about it for this tutorial. In the next one, we're going to go over the Game Master script. I'll see you then. Bye-bye.